Okay, we're slowly working our way out of Seti the First Temple and heading towards the enigmatic Osirion. So this is the Osirion and we're actually going to enter through the back way, which is a tunnel. You finding pottery? Great. Made it on a leaf. So we're entering the back way into the Osirion. So this is all mud brick construction, which is the most recent. It could be from the Greco-Roman time period. Thank you. Well, leaving the lights off makes it more mysterious. You notice how the floor slopes down? Small room.
So you see the saw cut on top? That's the biggest one I've ever seen. It's like 12 or 14 feet long. And Susan calls this sandstone, but I don't think so. I think this is quartzite from, brought from Cairo. But why they were attributing it to SETI-1 was there was a uh, dovetail joint up in the corner of the granite, and underneath the, underneath the side of the dovetail joint had SETI-1's cartouche in it. This is SETI-1's temple, just right back here. I think that when he came in here to build his temple, he found these and were afraid they were going to start falling in and put the dovetail joint up there. I think he found this, and as we're coming from South They should put lights in here. You see the beautiful corbel ceiling. No, you can come through. Come through. What's the point in me saying anything? Just look. So this is a very hard sandstone, more like a quartzite. It could have very well have come from Cairo, from the Red Mountain, which is where the stone for the Colossus of Memnon comes from. And this is granite, these columns. 
either from Aswan or from the eastern desert area near Sinai. And those are the famous flower of life. Some people have said that they're laser etched into the surface, but in fact it's a red ochre paint painted on. So those were done during the Greco-Roman time as, a, as an educational tool into sacred geometry. To be honest, I've got nothing to say because the, the site is speaking for itself. <laughs> no, it is. So if you have any questions, ask me. But obviously this is pre-dynastic masterpiece that was built on purpose underground. And then when Seti I found it, he built his building next to it. And it's the, you know, his building is at a different angle in terms of the cardinal points than this is. Well, and if you look at the sandstone up here, I think that SETI-1 put that stuff up there. Because that's completely different. I have a question. It's smaller scale. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, just to be honest, I've got nothing to say about this anymore because it's, it, you know, just look. You, use your eyes. Look at the scale. Yeah. I think that the what Susan said was that the granite, which is these vertical ones and the horizontal ones, either came from a quarry at Aswan or came from a quarry in the eastern desert near Sinai. And then the surrounding wall here, she calls it sandstone. I think it's more like quartzite. It's much harder. And I think that would have come from the quarry where the Colossi of Memnon came from, which is near, near Cairo. So you're talking the movement from the south hundreds of miles, and then movement from the north hundreds of miles. I have to be damn careful walking across this. What's interesting in here is this lintel, which is a cream color. Again, I think this is a type of quartzite, not just a local sandstone. And it's in each room, as far as I remember, as the upper part. And there are hieroglyphics, so the hieroglyphics would be from the time of Seti the First, because they're very shallow ones. Look at the size of this intact vertical block of granite. Again, that really interesting golden colored, I think, quartzite, not sandstone. Excuse me, Fred.
and some curious protrusions like what we see in Peru and also at the Menkare Pyramid in Egypt or on the Giza Plateau. Oh, darling. These things are poofed out a little like they are in Peru. Do you think they moved that way? Uh, So the building is perfectly bilateral symmetrical, bilaterally symmetrical. And the strange depressions like we see at Sacsayhuaman in Peru. And then you see the small stones used as filler probably was a flaw in the original stone and so they had to fit these small pieces in but they fit super tight Again, the sheer sense of scale. So again, these are hieroglyphs from the dynastic time peri period, probably from the time of Seti the First. And then they have probably flew it out of more curious knobs. Wow. That's mine. It's from the